I'm going to describe the second of the systems. Now that is the... I've forgotten. If the first one was the intention system, which is more to do with the future and what we're planning to do, person planning to do something or other, my intentions today and how that extends off into the future and hopefully it goes towards a goal, perhaps other people have their intentions and perhaps directing themselves towards certain goals. And we've got lots of different goals and lots of different projections and we're all kind of flowing together beautifully and harmoniously. Fantastic. Now that's the first system, the intention system. The second one is a coupling system. Now, the best way to do it is a completely different thing. Okay, so if the first one is to do with the flow and the kind of intentions, uh, vectors, movement, uh, inertia, people, movement, okay, uh, like the flow of water, then the uh, coupling system is more like how one molecule of water fits against another molecule of water and kind of like moves around. And if you know anything about water molecules, it'd be kind of interesting if I have a lot of this. Um, okay, so it kind of looks like this. Wow, I know this is meant to be for sulfur or something. Like that. All right, but the idea is that you've got H2O. Uh, H2O. Okay, let's just say that. And the idea is that if you have another one that's aligned beside it, it actually creates a tetrahedron shape. Okay. It's 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 stronger than a an, an, um, what is it? It's stronger than nuclear bond, but weaker than some other force. <laughs> I can't remember what it is. All right, but it means it's kind of got a, it's it's in between, and it means that actually it's got a little bit of a bond, so they tend to fall like this, and then they can move away. And so it has this kind of the effect at the emergent level is this amazing property of water. It's also the angles and blah blah blah. But that's the coupling system. Okay. Or if you think about uh, DNA, and I think I've written about this, viruses and so on and so forth, or how proteins work, and they kind of like fold into each other. It's kind of like you've got one protein that looks like that, and then you've got another protein that comes along, and it goes tuk, 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 jiggle, 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 and it kind of like links in, and then it moves around, okay, and it produces this protein. Uh, and that's how viruses, they make protein coats, that's how they actually manage to replicate. Right, now, so that means that it's kind of like, you know, handshake. Okay, a coupling system. It's like, you know, two trains and they come together, or two carriages, and there's that coupling system. It's kind of like that, but not just on a uni, uh, you know, uh, linear, bilinear, you know, single coupling. It's, imagine a whole surface. It's almost like a Velcro. If you look at Velcro, you've got all these, like, curves, all these, like, one side of it is the fluffy side, it's got all these kind of, like, curves, uh, loops, and then you've got the hooks, and you've got lots and lots of hooks, and, all, and they kind of loop it, link it. And that's what creates the kind of like, it's, and that's on the that's on the surface. Okay. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about people. <laughs> okay. So, what interfaces do we have? So many, it's unbelievable. So, what we've got is we've got a way for individuals to define uh, their own way of how you know that coupling might occur, and they're called declensions. So, for example, a useful declension would be enneagram. If you heard of the Enneagram, you've got about like nine different types of person. And the idea is, if the person says Enneagram, this is how you define it. And then you go off to a website and you find out, you know, how, what an Enneagram is. You conduct the test, you get the results, and you pop it back into your declension. So you can define yourself in the coupling system. You can define yourself, this is, this is my characteristics, uh, with the Enneagram. And then it might be another one with the, the Myers-Briggs. And, it, and again, you can go off somewhere other, you know, somebody's putting the links. So you go off somewhere, you find out, and you, you evaluate yourself, and you write yourself in the definition. But what's the point of doing that? Well, there's no point, all right? Or you might do it by chakra, okay? I'm kind of like, oh, I'm very red, or I'm very kind of like, you know, blue, or whatever the, the chakra is, you know, communication, will. Whatever the personality, oh, I'm introverted, extroverted, whatever, all right? Now, what's the point of this? Well, the idea is that if you've got a bunch of people that are meant to be potentially flowing well together towards a projection, Okay. What we want is we want a completely different way. It's almost like a mechanical way to evaluate whether you can actually work with another person or with a bunch of people. And so I might say, right, if I'm going to work on this projection for next month, okay, and there's like 40 people interested okay, in doing this, they've got their own projections, so you think, oh, okay, this is quite interesting. Okay. This, this coupling system allows me to say, right, I want to work with eight people, and the way I want them to work is by using this declension. Okay, I need to have a full, we need to have eight people, and each of these items have got to be kind of like fulfilled as far as I'm concerned. 
Okay, we have to have as a team all of these aspects covered. Okay, okay. So for example, I don't know. We're going to produce a music band, all right? Uh, you know, so you have to find out who's a drummer, who's a guitarist, and you know how good you are at keyboards and how good you are at vocals. And so you define those, all right? And somebody else comes along. Oh, I, I like the idea of being in that band. Why? Okay, but you do, right? And so okay, then well, I can play the guitars. I can't play the drums. I can, I can do the vocals. Okay, and so you put your your values. And if everybody does that, at some stage, the system spits out me and says, out of these eight people that are interested in this projection, three of them could fit together very well. Okay, these three fulfill you know the criteria with you. Okay. However, another band player may say, well, that's obvious, right? We're not particularly interested in that. I'm interested in personality types. I'm interested in who's got the ideas and so on and so forth. So they may have like Enneagram. Okay. And so the idea is that I might stipulate that I want this declension filled in. Everybody hopefully does that if they're interested. And if anybody else wants another declension filled in, then I fill it in because that's what the way that they're going to evaluate whether it's appropriate for them. That's sort of everything. It's kind of like a mechanical check. To, for us to be able to see if potentially we have the skill set required to be able to achieve a particular projection.